This command executes the NVIDIA System Management Interface, a tool that provides information about NVIDIA GPU devices. It displays a summary of the GPU status, including memory usage, GPU utilization, temperature, and running processes. This information is valuable for real-time performance monitoring, especially in scenarios involving machine learning models or other GPU-intensive tasks. It is commonly used in data centers and by developers to optimize GPU resource usage. This command uses pip, the Python package installer, to install the ARF2 Pandas library. The QQ flag suppresses output messages during installation for a cleaner process. The ARF2 Pandas library converts AIFF files, commonly used in machine learning, into Pandas data frames, making data manipulation and analysis in Python easier. This command installs or updates the watermark package in Python using pip, the package installer for Python. The Q flag suppresses output messages unless an error occurs, while the U flag instructs pip to upgrade the package to the latest version if it is already installed. This command ensures that you have the most recent version of the watermark tool, which is used to display versions of your environment's packages and other relevant information in a notebook or script. This command installs or updates the pandas library in a Python environment. The exclamation mark indicates it is meant for a Jupyter notebook or a similar interactive environment where shell commands can be executed. The pip install command is used to install Python packages and the options QQ enable quiet mode to reduce installation output, while U upgrades pandas to the latest version if it is already installed. This command ensures access to the most recent features and bug fixes of the pandas library. This code snippet in a Jupyter notebook loads the watermark extension to provide information about the notebook's environment. The command percent reload underscore extension watermark refreshes the extension to ensure access to the latest features. The following command percent watermark, v, p, numpy, pandas, torch, af2 pandas displays the versions of the specified packages, helping to track dependencies and ensure compatibility for collaboration and code sharing. This code sets up the environment for a data analysis and machine learning project using Python. It imports essential libraries for data manipulation, visualization, and machine learning, including Pandas, NumPy, Seban, Matplotlib, Torch, and Sklern. It initializes PyTorch for building neural networks and uses Seban and Matplotlib for creating graphs. The directive percent matplotlib inline ensures that plots display inline in a Jupyter notebook, while percent config inline backend.fig underscore format equals retina improves their visual quality. The code configures visual aesthetics by setting a specific color palette and defining the figure size. A random seed is established for NumPy and PyTorch to ensure reproducibility of results, which is important in data science workflows, effectively preparing the workspace for further analysis or model training. This command utilizes gdown, a command line tool for downloading files from Google Drive. The ID flag specifies the file ID, which is 16 mlaco ir one vyxlgk 4 gkngmi cpu wkkpt When run, it fetches the file link to that ID and saves it in the current working directory. This method allows users to directly retrieve data files or resources for analysis or development from Google Drive without using the web interface. This command extracts the contents of the file named ecg5000.zip without showing any progress details due to the QQ option which activates quiet mode. This allows users to access the files in the zip archive through a terminal or command line interface without cluttering the output with messages, making it useful for quickly retrieving files. This line of code identifies the suitable device for computations in PyTorch. It checks for the availability of a CUDA compatible GPU using torch.cuda.is underscore available. If a GPU is present, the device is set to CUDA, if not, it defaults to CPU. This capability enables the program to utilize hardware acceleration, enhancing performance for deep learning model training and inference. The code opens two files, ecg5000 underscore train.arf and ecg5000 underscore test.arf, which are likely datasets in AIFF format for machine learning. It uses a context manager to ensure the files are closed after loading their content. The function a2p.load is called on each file, converting the AIFF data into a more manageable format, likely a pandas data frame. Consequently, the variable train stores the training data set, while test contains the testing data set, preparing them for further analysis or model training. 
This code combines two data frames, train and test, into a single data frame called df using the append method. It then shuffles the rows of df randomly by sampling all the data in a random order. The final step retrieves the dimensions of the resulting data frame, showing the number of rows and columns in df. This code retrieves the first five rows of a data frame named df. It provides a quick preview of the data frame structure and contents, displaying the column names and data types. Using head allows you to view a subset of the dataset without displaying the entire content, which is particularly useful for large datasets. This code defines a constant called class underscore normal with a value of 1, indicating a specific class type within a classification system, likely for medical or signal processing applications. A list named class underscore names contains string representations of various classifications such as normal, RNT, PVC, SP, and UB. This suggests that the code is designed to categorize or label different data points or events within a larger analysis. The constant and the list provide a clear mapping between numerical identifiers and their corresponding descriptive labels. This code snippet renames the last column of a data frame called df to target. It creates a list of the current column names, modifies the last name in the list, and then updates df with the new column names. This is helpful for specifically labeling a target variable in machine learning tasks or similar situations. This line of code counts the unique values in the target column of the data frame df and returns a series with unique values as the index and their corresponding counts as the values. This helps assess the distribution of categories in the target column, providing insight into data balance, particularly in classification tasks. This code generates a count plot with the Sieben library to show the distribution of counts for various categories in the target column of the data frame df. The sns.countplot function creates the plot, and ax represents the axes object. The xtick labels are then adjusted using set underscore xtick labels to display the category names from the class underscore names variable, replacing default numerical labels for better clarity. This function generates a time series plot for a specified data set, illustrating its average and variation over a defined number of steps. It accepts the data, a title for the plot, a matplotlib axis object, and an optional parameter indicating the number of steps for the rolling calculation. The function begins by converting the input data into a pandas data frame. It then calculates a rolling mean and standard deviation over the specified steps, which smooths the data and assesses its variance. Upper and lower bounds are computed based on the rolling metrics, resulting in a shaded area that displays the data's variability. Finally, the function plots the rolling mean on the designated axis and fills the area between the upper and lower bounds with a light color to highlight the range of variation, setting the plot title to the provided class name. This code sets up subplots to visualize the average time series data for different classes in a data frame named df. It identifies the unique target classes and creates a grid of subplots, allocating one subplot for each class with a maximum of three columns per row. The code then iterates through each class, extracts the relevant data, calculates the mean of the features while excluding the target column, and converts this mean into a numpy array. The function plot underscore time underscore series underscore class is called with the mean data, class name, and subplot axis to generate the time series plot for each class. Finally, the code removes any empty subplots and adjusts the layout for improved spacing. This code filters a data frame called df to create a new data frame named normal underscore df, which includes only the rows where the target column equals class underscore normal. The value of class underscore normal is converted to a string for accurate comparison. After filtering, the target column is removed from normal underscore df, leaving only the relevant features. Finally, normal underscore df dot shape is used to get the dimensions of the new data frame, returning a tuple that indicates the number of rows and columns. This code filters a data frame named df to create a new data frame called anomaly underscore df. It selects rows where the value in the target column does not equal the string representation of class underscore normal. After filtering, it removes the target column from the resulting data frame. Finally, the shape attribute of anomaly underscore df provides the dimensions of the new data frame, showing the number of rows and columns. This code snippet splits the dataset named normal underscore df into training, validation, and testing subsets. It first creates a training set, train underscore df, and a validation set, val underscore df, by allocating 15% of normal underscore df for validation while controlling randomness with a fixed random underscore seed. 
Next, it further divides the validation set into a new validation set, val underscore df, and a testing set, test underscore df, where 33% of the original validation data is designated for testing. This results in approximately 70% of the data for training, 15% for validation, and 15% for testing, since 33% of the 15% validation set becomes the test set. This function takes a data frame as input and transforms it into a list of PyTorch tensors for machine learning models. It first converts the data frame to a NumPy array with a data type of 32-bit floats. Each sequence in the array is then converted into a PyTorch tensor with an additional dimension added for compatibility. The tensors are set to a floating point type. After creating the tensor dataset, the function determines the number of sequences, the length of each sequence, and the number of features by examining the shape of the stack tensors. Finally, the function returns the dataset along with the sequence length and the number of features. This process is particularly useful for preparing data for models that handle time series or sequential data. The code establishes datasets for training, validation, and testing from different data frames. The create underscore dataset function is invoked for train underscore df, val underscore df, test underscore df, and anomaly underscore df. It obtains training data, sequence length, and number of features from the training data frame, assigning these to train underscore dataset, seq underscore n, and n underscore features. The validation dataset is generated from val underscore df, but any additional returned values are ignored. Similarly, test underscore normal underscore dataset is created from test underscore df and test underscore anomaly underscore dataset from anomaly underscore df, with sequence length and features returned from these calls also ignored. This structure is commonly used in preparing datasets for machine learning or time series analysis. This code defines a neural network encoder using PyTorch's NN module for processing sequential data. The encoder comprises two LSTM layers designed to encode input sequences into a compact representation. The init method initializes the encoder's parameters, including sequence length, number of features, and embedding dimension, and sets up the two LSTM layers. The first LSTM processes the input features and produces a larger hidden state, while the second LSTM refines this representation to the specified embedding dimension. In the forward method, the input tensor X is reshaped to fit the expected dimensions for the LSTMs. It passes through the first LSTM, and the output is fed into the second LSTM. The last hidden state of the second LSTM serves as the encoded representation of the input sequence, which is reshaped and returned for further processing or downstream tasks. The decoder class is part of a neural network architecture using PyTorch, extending an N module to process data sequences with LSTM layers. In the initialization method, it sets parameters such as sequence length, input feature dimensionality, and the number of output features. Two LSTM layers are created, the first maintains the input size and output size, while the second LSTM has its hidden size increased to double the input dimension. The output layer is a linear layer that converts the output from the second LSTM to the desired number of features. In the forward method, the input tensor is adjusted for LSTM processing by repeating it to match the sequence length and reshaping it as needed. The data passes through both LSTM layers and the output from the final LSTM is reshaped before being sent to the output layer, resulting in the final decoder output. This design is well suited for sequential data processing, applicable in scenarios like time series prediction and sequence generation. The recurrent autoencoder class inherits from NN module in PyTorch and is designed for creating a recurrent autoencoder model for sequential data processing. During initialization, it establishes two key components, an encoder, which compresses the input sequence into a lower dimensional representation, and a decoder, which reconstructs the original sequence from this embedded representation. The dimensions of the sequences, features, and embedding size are defined as parameters when instantiating the class. In the forward method, the model processes the input by passing it through the encoder to obtain the encoded representation, followed by the decoder to reconstruct the original data. The output of the forward method is the reconstructed sequence, facilitating effective learning of patterns in sequential data and enabling the model to generate outputs similar to the inputs. This code snippet initializes a recurrent autoencoder model with a specified sequence length, number of features, and a hidden layer size of 128. The recurrent autoencoder class defines the architecture and behavior of the autoencoder. 
After creating the model instance, it is moved to a specified computational device, such as a CPU or GPU, to enable efficient computation for large datasets or complex models. This function trains a deep learning model using a training dataset while monitoring its performance on a validation dataset over a specified number of epochs. It employs the Atom Optimizer with a learning rate of 0.001 and utilizes L1 loss for training. The model's parameters and loss criterion are initialized and training and validation losses are stored in a dictionary for analysis. The model's weights are saved if the validation loss improves during training. During each epoch, the model enters training mode and processes the training dataset batch by batch. For each batch, previous gradients are cleared, a forward pass is performed to obtain predictions and the loss is calculated against the true values. Gradients are computed, and the optimizer updates the model weights accordingly, collecting training batch losses. After training, the model switches to evaluation mode, processing the validation dataset without updating weights to conserve memory. Average training and validation losses are computed and recorded. If the validation loss is the lowest encountered, the model's weights are updated to reflect this improvement. At the end of the training process, the model reverts to the best weights found and returns alongside the recorded history of losses for performance evaluation. This code calls the function train underscore model to train a machine learning model. The function requires several parameters, including the model to be trained, a training dataset, a validation dataset, and the number of training iterations, which is set to 150. It returns the trained model and its history, which typically includes metrics such as loss and accuracy over the training epochs for post-training analysis. This code uses matplotlib, a plotting library in Python, to visualize the training and validation loss of a model across multiple epochs. It creates a new figure and retrieves the current axes. The code plots the training loss from history train and the validation loss from history val. The y-axis is labeled loss and the x-axis is labeled epoch. A legend is included to distinguish between the training and validation loss lines, and the plot is titled loss over training epochs. Finally, it displays the plot. This code effectively visualizes changes in the model's loss during training, aiding performance analysis. This code saves a PyTorch model to a file called model.pth using the torch.save function. It takes the model object and the desired file path as arguments. After executing this line, the model's current state will be stored on disk, enabling you to load and use it later without retraining. This snippet outlines the process of downloading a file and preparing a machine learning model. It begins by using gdown to retrieve a model file named model.pth from Google Drive, specified by its file ID. Next, the model file is loaded into a PyTorch model object. Finally, the model is transferred to a specified device, typically a CPU or GPU, to prepare it for inference or training. This setup is standard when working with pre-trained models in PyTorch. The predict function generates predictions from a machine learning model using a specified data set while calculating the associated losses. It begins by initializing lists for predictions and losses and employs L1 loss as the loss criterion, which measures absolute differences between predicted and actual values. The loss is summed across all data points and moved to the appropriate device, such as a GPU or CPU. Within a no-gradient context, the function sets the model to evaluation mode to adjust certain layers like dropout and batch normalization. For each sequence in the dataset, it transfers the true sequence to the designated device and generates predictions by passing this true sequence through the model. The loss is computed by comparing predictions with true values using L1 loss, and the predicted values are flattened and converted to a numpy array before being added to the predictions list. The loss value is converted to a Python float and added to the losses list. The function then returns the predictions and losses as separate lists, which aids in analyzing the model's performance on the dataset. The code calls a predict function with a machine learning model and a training dataset, which returns two values. The first value is ignored, while the second value, losses, contains the loss metrics from the model's predictions on the training data. The code then uses the CBIN library to create a distribution plot of the losses data, configuring it to have 50 bins and including a kernel density estimate line. This visualization aids in understanding the distribution of model losses and identifying patterns or anomalies. This line of code defines a constant named threshold with a value of 26. 
constants are used to represent fixed values that remain unchanged throughout the program. The uppercase naming convention indicates that this value functions as a global constant which may be utilized later in the code for comparisons, controlling flow, or setting limits, depending on the context. This code begins by calling the predict function with a model and a test normal data set, which produces two outputs, predictions, representing the model's predicted values, and pred underscore losses, containing the errors associated with those predictions. It then utilizes Sieben to create a distribution plot of the pred underscore losses. The parameter bin set to 50 divides the data into 50 intervals for the histogram, while KDE set to true overlays a kernel density estimate line on the histogram. This visualization aids in understanding the distribution of prediction losses, thereby facilitating the assessment of the model's performance regarding prediction error. This code counts the number of predictions in the pred underscore losses list that are less than or equal to a specified threshold. It uses the sum function with a generator expression that iterates over each prediction loss in pred underscore losses, evaluating if each loss meets the threshold condition. The sum of these evaluations is stored in the variable correct. Following this, the code prints a message showing how many predictions are classified as correct normal predictions, along with the total number of items in the test underscore normal underscore dataset. This provides a clear insight into the model's performance in correctly identifying normal cases based on the defined threshold. This line of code creates a new dataset named anomaly underscore dataset by slicing test underscore anomaly underscore dataset to match the length of test underscore normal underscore dataset. This ensures that anomaly underscore dataset contains the same number of samples as test underscore normal underscore dataset, which is useful for balanced testing or analysis, particularly in machine learning where class distribution matters. This code snippet performs two main tasks. It first calls the predict function with a trained model and an anomaly dataset, which computes predictions and their corresponding losses. The predictions variable stores the model's output, while pred underscore losses holds the loss values that indicate the accuracy of these predictions. The second part utilizes the Sieben library to visualize the distribution of prediction losses. The sns.distplot function creates a histogram with 50 bins for the pred underscore losses and overlays a kernel density estimate to illustrate the probability density function of the losses. This visualization aids in understanding the distribution of prediction errors, providing insights into the model's performance on the dataset. This code calculates the number of correct anomaly predictions based on a threshold. It iterates through a list called pred underscore losses, which contains prediction loss values and counts how many of those values exceed a specified threshold. The result is stored in the variable correct, and it finally outputs a message showing the number of correct predictions along with the total number of entries in anomaly underscore dataset, providing a clear indication of prediction accuracy for anomalies. The plot underscore prediction function takes four parameters, data, a trained model, a title for the plot, and an axe object for drawing. It starts by calling a predict function that generates predictions and calculates the loss using the model and input data. The function then plots the true data on the axe object and labels it as true. It also plots the reconstructed predictions, labeling this line as reconstructed. The plot title is set to include the specified title along with the formatted loss value. Finally, a legend is displayed to differentiate between the true data and the reconstructed data. This code creates a 2x6 grid of subplots using matplotlib, a widely used Python plotting library. The figsize parameter specifies the overall dimensions of the figure as 22 inches wide and 8 inches tall. The first loop processes the first six entries from the test underscore normal underscore data set using the plot underscore prediction function to generate predictions from the model and display them in the top row of the grid with the title normal. The axis is 0, i indicates the subplot's position in the first row. The second loop performs a similar function for the first six entries from the test underscore anomaly underscore data set, plotting them in the second row under the title anomaly. Finally, figure tight underscore layout is used to optimize subplot parameters for a cleaner layout, ensuring that titles and axes do not overlap.